Welcome to POW, your progression of the week. Back here with Rachel from Wyndham, New Hampshire. And we've been going through, the past couple of weeks, we've been going through the uh, new Ropa release and just giving you some tips on execution, um, different ways to progress clients and members through the program without skipping, um, with taking care of the client's needs, things that they need right then and there, rather than, hey, listen, sit that one out if you're not, you know. There's always a way to get these things done. This windmill that, that Rachel's about to show you, this is one of those progressions. Uh, you've probably seen us use this with a leash. Um, we've done this with tubing hanging from the ceiling. This in a class format, I think, is probably the, the most efficient because you've already got, you've already got the, the, the product hanging from the ceiling for your suspension. Um, and I've seen it work. It works beautifully. We've done it. We, we, the big guys, you mentioned that earlier. That's a great way to get guys to, especially guys that, that have that impingement area, they're real tight in their shoulders. If they can do that get up sit up, this is the next. This would be the next progression. That's where you find that out. But I'm gonna let Rachel explain this to you guys. Um, great way to get people to understand the bullseye in the ceiling. Some of the cues that we take for granted, like hey, draw a bullseye in the ceiling. Most people look at you like, what the heck is he talking about? What bullseye? What's, where, what do I? How do I do that? This allows that to happen very easily because you're gonna leave that handle in one place, move away from it. So moving away from the weight, moving back under it it makes sense because you've got something in your hand to work with that doesn't come with you. It's, it's, uh, it's attached, it's stationary. So. This came purely out of uh, necessity uh, because we have a lot of people who were tight in the shoulders and the windmill, they, they didn't want to do it. They wanted to skip it. Every time we got to the windmill, can we just do something different? And the answer was no. So I came up with this um, and it's really helped a lot of people because it teaches them to rotate from their torso to get under the weight which helps to lift and set back the shoulder. Um, specifically, we have a client who's a painter, so he's in oh. this position all day. So something like this has really helped him with overhead squats or anything overhead for that matter. So you're gonna step forward on the loop, creating tension in the strap, the arm is above you. You're gonna turn your toes to 10 or 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock just like you would in a windmill with the weight. And you're just gonna proceed like a regular windmill. Guiding your hand down to the inside of the thigh, forces you to rotate, from your middle and then coming on back up. So it can be used as a warm up, it can be used as work, it can be used as a stretch. You could stay here at the end of your class <laughs> or not. <laughs> what I like is, and if you watch Rachel or adjust her body, she moved back a little bit. So this is never taut, it's, it's, it's got a little bit of slack in it. So you're not pulling on the shoulder. It gets to move, it moves freely, right? Yeah, so there's adjustment necessary for sure, um, different than when you have a weight, because you can't really adjust once that weight. That's the one, exactly. But for here, you can really fine tune your windmill and find exactly where your foot placement needs to be, where your arm place, placement needs to be, and then you're really understanding the position of the movement so that when you put a weight in your hand, it should mimic that same track. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I think the most important thing is is the the, the adjustment. Walking away, walking backwards to give your shoulder enough freedom to move. Yep. Again, these are things that we take for granted, and, and you know, uh, those of you that are watching this, you may also take it for granted. The person doing this for the first time, the person who has those tight shoulders. They may not know that, and they may think it's this rigid exercise that they have to hold on to this handle. It's not about the handle. This is just a guide. Um, and you know, I find that quite a bit that what we find easy, right? And again, we take it for granted. The members and the clients don't. You have to assume that they don't. Um, don't be afraid to, to, to teach that. Stop the class and make sure that everyone is doing this properly. And then you'll create that experience where the room just flows. Yep. So they're not just calling out one individual. Hey guys, we're gonna do the windmill with the, you know, the XT handle. Remember, if you need to adjust, walk it backwards. Mm -hmm. Walk it forward if you need to. Um, it, I just see too many times people keep, they, they put their clients in a little box and they get way, stays way too rigid, you know? Yeah. And they make them keep doing it and doing it until they perfect it with the weight, and that's really not the place mm -hmm. to perfect it because they're scared. Um, so this just takes all of the unsafeness out of the exercise and allows people to be a little bit more open. There's a lot of release that happens too, so they make mm -hmm. flexibility and mobility, and practicing this as long as possible until they're able 
uh, to put weight in their hand is, is perfect. We've done it before with um, a kettlebell or a dumbbell on our bottom hand, just to understand how that feels, and then slowly they'll transition that weight up top, and then maybe over time they have weight in both hands. Yeah, and yeah, and that's a that's a great point. Start out, don't go right with you know throwing weight up top. If that's the comfort zone for that person, and they're increasing that range of motion and that flexibility, uh, and even stability in some cases, put that weight in the bottom hand. It's much safer. It's just as effective for for the for range of motion, right? And then, if necessary, if the person is ready for it. Then you can take it to that next level where you can put maybe a body bar in the hand mm -hmm. or a small dumbbell or, and a, or a kettlebell. Um, but these are those first progressions that are the most important for base building. And they're still challenging. You know, it, it's challenge sometimes can be, hey, let's increase your flexibility. Mm -hmm. Let's work on that today. So it doesn't always have to be the ass kicking. Sometimes the challenge is just getting better at moving. You know, so keep that in mind as, you, as you're going through these, these, these workouts and the way you progress people through them. Explain that to people. They love learning about it. They love it. They don't, they don't you know, they may think they want that, that, that real ass kick, but what they really want is to leave better than when they walked in the door. Um, I mean, you do that. I see you do it all the time. I, and, 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 you know, most trainers probably do, but at one point, you know, you get those, those real dominant clients that they, they insist and almost demand it from you, and they make you feel like, if you don't give me the hardest workout ever, I'm quitting. You know, they almost make you feel like that, so trainers feel compelled to keep changing it up every day. It's not the variety that's going to keep right. them staying, it's going to be this type of variety, which is gonna give them the precision, which is gonna make them stay. Yes. Because probably what they're lacking is precision, they're just looking for volume, they're not really right. looking or doing quality work. Yes, So. well said. So if you want a great retention tool, get more and more success for your client, and that's dictated by you, the trainer, you, the coach, that is not dictated by the member or the client. That's why they're paying you, we're paying us, to teach them to be better, get them, give them that better quality of life. That's our job. Don't let the client dictate your job. All right, good luck with this. We will see you next week.